Jesus and on the hidden coverage. Jesus Christ came for everybody. So, and that was how the gospel spread. If not because of what happened in Acts the Apostles chapter 10, by now you and I have no right to be Christian. The early church will see us and say, where are you from? They say, Nigeria, I can't know that. <laughs> Somebody read Acts the Apostles chapter 10. Let us even see why we now have rights to be called Christian because it wasn't like that before. The early church didn't see, they didn't admit any other person to be Christians apart from the Jewish people. If somebody have asked an apostleship to tell, let's just read through that. So that when we are calling ourselves Christians, we know the basis for it. Hallelujah. How we got admitted into being Christians. I can read from my phone, it doesn't matter if you have not Let me read from my phone. So I'm going to read this one quickly for us. And then we can. Malekos Kamana Tiske Pene Desantai. Acts 10. But TJ, thank you, sir. You're doing a great job for us. We really appreciate that. Thank you. Acts the Apostle chapter 10. Let me read very quickly. There was a certain man in Kaziria. Acts the Apostle chapter 10. I am reading from verse 1. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man, and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. So this Cornelius was not even an Israelite. And so sometimes the Bible says we should not know any man after the flesh. The early Christians, they thought because this man is from uh, the Gentiles, that's what they called us. Uh, surely nothing good can be come out from a Gentile. But not knowing that even this Cornelius, even when he was not Christian, he was a good man. Do you know that there are some people who are not even Christians, but they're very good people? So Muslims are very good people, but of course, being good is not the same thing as being born again. Very good people. Some people are Hindu, but they are very nice people. Some of them are even better than some Christians. Sorry to judge, but it feels that way. But, unfortunately, being good and nice is not enough for somebody to make it to heaven. But God saw that this Cornelius was a good man. And God knew that if Cornelius just continued as a good man without being born again, he's not going to make it to heaven. So Cornelius was good, he was behaving well, he was loving his neighbor, and God decided to do something now to help Cornelius. So let's read that verse 2 again. A devout man and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much arms to the people and prayed to God always. So now, God saw all his good work and knew that this man is a very good man. But if he continued being just being good and righteous by himself, he would do all this goodness and righteousness and then miss the most important thing in heaven. So God said, no, I'm going to make sure that this man doesn't miss it to heaven. Amen. Look at verse 4. God bless you, my sister. Verse 3. And he saw in a vision, evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thy arms are come up for a memorial before God. So all the good things that Cornelius has been doing, all the people that Cornelius has been helping, all the things, the administration that Cornelius has been doing, behind nobody seeing them, but God was seeing them. Hallelujah. And on this particular day, God came and said, Cornelius, you think I don't know what you've been doing in the back? You've been doing very nice work. It's time to open the book of record and to remember you. Hallelujah. Just like some of us, God will knock on our door very soon. Thank you, Jesus. And God will remember us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
Amen. 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 He will do what? Remember. Walk on our door remember. and remember us. Hey, glory be to God. Thank Are you listening Jesus. to me? Yes. It's not a time for you to thank God. Why am I doing this thing for nothing? You are not doing whatever you are doing for nothing. It's not for nothing. You cannot be for nothing. Thank you, Jesus. Are you listening to me? So keep doing what you are doing. Nobody may see you or people may misunderstand you. Just keep doing it. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Just keep doing it. Because God said their prayers and their arms are come up to me for a memorial. He opened his book and remembered Cornelius and all the good things he's been doing. And now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose son name is Peter. He lodged with one Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the seaside, and he shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. And when the angel which spake unto Cornelius was departed, he called two of his household servants and a devil soldier of them that wanted on him, waited on him continually. And when he had declared all these things unto them, he sent them to Joppa. On the morrow, the next day, as they went on their journey and drew nigher to the city, Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. And he became very hungry and would have eaten. But while they made ready, the, 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 made ready, he fell into a trance, and saw heaven opened, and a certain vessel descended upon him, as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners, and led down to the earth, wherein were all manners of four-footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts, and creeping things, and fowls of the earth. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the boy spake unto him again the second time, What God has cleansed, that call thou common, call not thou common. God is saying here, All of us have to live to respect one another. So whatever God has created, let no man go. come on. The people and people that was looking at uh, the house of Cornelius at that time, said, so surely this house of Cornelius is the terrible sinners. But God saw the house of Cornelius differently. And God said, whatever he has created, let no man go. come on. Are you listening to me? Because the people you call come on today who can actually become the powerful vessels that God is preparing for great things tomorrow. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Most of the powerful people that God has used in our end time and is still using, uh, William Seymour, for example, he came from a working class family. William Seymour was the man that God used to bring about Azusa revival. So you see Christians speaking in tongues, you see the Pentecostal dimension, you see the vibrancy that people are praying, they say, Lakoto, Capra, Lebraco, that vibrancy that came to church, the man that God used to bring that fire, William Seymour. William Seymour did not even go to a theological school. William Seymour is not like a high end, you know, prim and proper preacher. Actually, with due respect, he had one of his eyes blind. He was blind in one eye. And then people were mocking him because of one of his blind eyes. But only the one he has, God used that one to do very amazing things. So some people will come, they will put their hands in the pocket when the meeting is going on. They say, what is going on here? Because those ones are like the PhD holders. They are the people that are high up there in theology. They've gone to university, they've got PhD degree. So they come with their prima and proper suits. The, the William Seymour, I'm telling you now, the man, this pulpit was still said is like, what, do you know what he uses like this pulpit? Cardboard, boxes. Like, you know, your TV box, he cut it into pieces, and then he used the TV box. He used the TV box 
Because things do something to me before I'm born again. Yeah. They say, yes, yeah, the witches are this. But the gift of work, because it was a gift from God, what is it? It's not to do with me, it's about yeah. God. Yeah. So the gift of work, but when we get Christ, you now I'm baptized, yeah. now I realize who I am in Christ. But I was that person a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The sin is there. Yes. No, no, tell me, the devil created. How many people did the devil create? <laughs> Yeah. Devil have not created anybody. And if God creates anybody that God creates, God creates everybody with good things. Is that true? Yeah. God cannot create somebody with evil. It's just that when God creates people with good things, the devil now goes yeah. and deceives the people and turns the good things yeah, into a bad thing. Yeah, it's not true. Yeah, it's not true. And then put his own there. So everything that, any bad thing that somebody is manifesting, even the small child, they talk to the small child. So, so small child, the first thing, they, 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 before they learn how to say yes, they say no. Give me that. No. no. Uh -huh. So why don't you say yes before you say the no? Way to, the way to darkness is broad. Yeah. Very broad. Mm -hmm. But the way to good is narrow. Yeah. So that's why they do the bad things easy. Don't please. Yeah. Give me that. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know that's how much you do when they were taught last. That's the first. They said no before they say yes. yes. Okay. That's the nature of man. And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at the feet and worshipped him. But Peter took him up, saying, Stand up, I myself also am a man. And he talked with him. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many that were come together. This is turning to a crusade. And he said unto them, You know that it is an unlawful thing. For a man that is a Jew to keep company or come into one of another nation. But God has showed me that I should not call any man. God said I should not call any man common or unclean. Mm -hmm. He should not call any man common or okay. unclean. Therefore came I unto you without gainsaying. As soon as I was sent for, I asked therefore, for what intent you have sent for me? And Cornelius said, Four days ago I was fasting until this hour, and at the night hour I prayed in my house, and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing, and said, Cornelius, thy prayer is hard, and thy arms are hard in remembrance in the sight of God. Send therefore to Job. So essentially, when, they were, uh, when, when Peter preached the gospel, uh, Peter now preached the gospel to them. Now see, in verse 44, while Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them that were there. Peter was still preaching the gospel, and then the power came down and fell upon everybody who were there at the time. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, and as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, Can any man? So, so now Peter preached the gospel, they accept the gospel. Then Peter said, Can any man forbid water that this should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as we all have? And he commanded them to be baptized. In the name of the Lord, then pray to him to tarry certain days. Just like some of us will be baptized today. And we'll be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And God will start a new thing in our lives. Hallelujah. Different encounters, powerful visitations, Amen. extraordinary move of God will begin to happen in our lives once we encounter Jesus through this baptism in Jesus' name. Amen. So our response, when they finish preaching the gospel, the people say, oh, we want to be saved. So they got saved. But just doing a quick recap. Steps to salvation, number one, we need to recognize that without God, we're nothing. God created the world. Man had a good relationship, but his relationship was faulted, compromised in Genesis chapter 3. In Exodus chapter 20, God brought a temporary solution in the form of the Old Testament, the Ten Commandments. God knew he wasn't going to work. And when man struggled with the Ten Commandments, God went and brought a more permanent arrangement. And what is a more permanent arrangement? Jesus Christ. 
Old Testament didn't work. It didn't work because people struggled with it. Old Testament is people being righteous by themselves. Old Testament meaning that uh, 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 people have to keep pigeon. Okay. They kill pigeon so that the blood of pigeon can, you know, alleviate their sins. Why is this so? Because however you look at it, we are lies. Remember that when God created Adam in Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, Adam was not a living. It was the Spirit of God that came in Adam, that gave life to Adam. So the Spirit of God is life. And when anybody compromises in sin, that life is tampered with. The life we live is a spiritual life. And that is why the Bible even tells us that when we become born again, God also made a provision. Because every time we sin, we are, our spirit man is tampered with. And our spirit man is actually our life. And for that to be reenacted, there has to be some type of life that brings life back to us. Sin is a killer. Do you have enough us? The Bible says the wages of sin is what? Death. 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 Thank you. So anytime we sin, we are put in the position of death. Uh -huh. So it will take, it will take life to bring life back to our spirit man again. So even as believers, when we sin, we die. And then we die spiritually. And then First John chapter 1 verse 9 says, if we confess our sins, God is just and faithful to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So, the cleansing power in the blood of Jesus brings life back to us again. So, one way or the other, there has to be some life giving to revive a dead life. It's just like some people you see, people who fall on the street, they die. Not they die, they collapse or they become unconscious. The people have to now resuscitate them physically, sometimes to, to, uh, through putting breath in their mouth, whatever process they go through, and then they come alive. Some people put on their, I don't know why they do that, they write on their chest, do not resuscitate. Have you seen the people like that? Actually, I was looking for something recently. One man took uh, an ambulance worker to court in America. You know why? He said, he wrote on his chest, tattooed on his chest. Do not resuscitate. So once he's gone, he's gone. Don't bring him back. So this ambulance man found him where he fell down, he collapsed, you know, unconscious, and then he resuscitated him. So when the man came back to life, they were told him he died, but he was resuscitated. So he took the ambulance person to court. So it was a big problem. The judge didn't know what to say. So why did you have to bring me back to life? I said, well, he said when he died, just anything happened to him, don't bring him back to life. In America, it's a very, in America is a very interesting country. So it was a very big argument. The, the proceeding was going on in the courts. These days people write it on their chest. I don't know whether it's some type of group they belong to, or I don't know what it is. They tattoo on this. It's not like they tattoo so that if anything happens, this is where you resuscitate somebody. Yes, so let's see, don't resuscitate them. They call it DNR. So what, some of them will write it in abbreviation DNR, do not resuscitate. Others will write it in full, do not resuscitate. But that is for them. I don't know why they do that. They have to have their reasons. Spiritual or otherwise, they may have to know what it is. But we know that when anybody commits sin, we die spiritually. Mm -hmm. And we have to be resuscitated through the cleansing power in the blood of Jesus. So that is why, so when those things happen in the Old Testament, I understand why people have to keep pigeon and bull because when they sin, they die spiritually. So that bull and pigeon is what brings spiritual life back. So we have to like give our lives to Christ have salvation and invite Jesus into our lives. So this is all the things we said, we just presented them dramatically. The first uh, uh, slide by the left is the creation and the good relationship that God has with man. The second slide to the right is when man sinned, that is Adam and Eve, Victoria representation of Adam and Eve, being driven from the Garden of Eden, because we know that in the, in the slide to the left, the first slide to the left, Adam and Eve were alive. Yes, they were saying that God created them and gave Adam the power to name everything that he created. 
that power was lost, that authority was lost, but they became dead spiritually. So God drove them out, but he didn't want them to remain comfortless forever. So he brought a temporary arrangement, that is the second slide, the bottom slide to the left, temporary arrangement through Moses in the form of Ten Commandments, which of course God knew wouldn't work. God knows that if you give Adam and Eve such a powerful position and yet they compromised it, Ten Commandments wouldn't work. So man struggled with the Ten Commandments and God brought Jesus Christ as a more permanent solution. And so we said whatever happens, there is going to be a white throne judgment. There's going to be a day that one of us will stand before God and give account of our lives. Okay, we remember yesterday we were saying that any sin we commit is wiped away, is no longer held accountable to us. Yes, that is true. But during this white throne judgment, all the sins we committed will be reviewed. Except that when it is being reviewed at the white throne judgment, they will say, well, you swear at somebody the other day, but you confessed your sin, so it was wiped away, and that is why it will not count against John, for example. Peter, you went and pickpocketed somebody sometime, but that was when you were not born again. So when you became born again, we wiped it. Although it was wiped up, they had everything, but they can't count against you anymore. And eventually, after this white throne judgment, we pray that we make our way to the marriage supper, marriage supper meeting, where we will meet with Jesus, and Jesus gives us the key to our mansion in heaven. And then we we'll ask whether material things are really worthwhile to stop somebody from going to heaven. Some people are very desperate for material things. I don't know about Caribbean, but I know that Nigeria, where I come from, there are some people that enter into a covenant with the devil that they will be rich, but they cannot spend up to, maybe some of them will not be up to 40 years. Some of them can be very powerfully rich in just a period of three, four years. They have all the money, they, they are so rich, they don't have anything, but they can't live more than three years. Some of them will enter a covenant with the devil, they can't live with their family. They can't live with their wife, they can't live with their children, but they have a massive house. So, their family can only visit them, but they can't live in the house. Some of them, you know, it's very interesting. Oh, so God Almighty, so we see Paul, some of them can't have evil, give them family. They can't, their no. wife can't sleep over And some can't give them family, nothing with them. No. Yeah. Their wife can't sleep, stay in the house from one day and cross over to the other mm-hmm. day. Once they're around 11 o'clock in the night, they have to go. Some of them will start buildings. They can have about 20 buildings going on, but they can't complete any one. They will finish it, maybe do everything. There must be something. Any day they complete that building, they will die. Okay, you know about what? This is not true. There's one man who used to be an occult grandmaster. So the man was very deep in occultism, and he has so much money. But the covenant he entered with the devil is that throughout his lifetime, he is not allowed to see sunlight. What a vampire. <laughs> eh, okay. Throughout his lifetime, there's any day you see light, daytime night, night, you die. shall die. Eh? So when he built his big house, but was staying in the basement. <laughs> so before you come out, the people say, somebody look over, is it dark? <laughs> oh, God Almighty and God say, I added that no sorrow. Look for the sorrow when they forgive them. Eh? Why don't they do it? Look for the sorrow when the devil give. Hey! So, joking, I said, if they got, if they devil want to kill that man in the hot sunlight, hey. he will just set fire in the basement. <laughs> if they keep fire going to get in the basement, is that how he die in the fire or he come out and die? <laughs> no escape. Eh? Oh, God, you know, my so, you so know devil, yeah, devil put that and say, ah, the man will just say, okay, I will stay in the basement. The dead devil want to kill the man, yeah? When the temperature is about 30 degrees, <laughs> bright sunlight, fire goes into that basement. So it's either he run out to, and, to the light, light and die there. And, <laughs> there and, die. and die. No choice. It's very interesting. So, are material things worth losing them? 
Nobody in these days thinks up to 150 years. Very rare you see people living 100. So, so we have a very limited time on the earth. And that is why the Bible describes you and I as strangers who are just passing by. So it's not worthwhile, even if we're going to live 200 years, but this earth is, it has a start date, it has an end date. Eternity does not have an end date. That's why it's called eternity in the first place. So for me, let's not compromise. Let's, let's live here, do our planning, do our studies, do our career pursuit, do our business. But let that not compromise our ability to spend an eternity with Jesus in heaven. So Jesus says people must come to him. They must be repentance. People must believe and see the need for them to repent and turn away from every unrighteous work. Says Jesus said, Come unto me, or eat that they will give you rest. How do we become born again? Number one, we need to confess our sins. Bible says, He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, for he that confesseth his sins shall obtain mercy. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13. Jesus is asking us to come the way we are. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 8 to 13. Say, For with the heart a man believeth, with the tongue, with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Verse 13. Said, uh, whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So, and there were two questions during this session. We said, did people have any question? Um, don't think there's any question so far because I didn't come out with two questions. Then we moved on to session two, which was yesterday. We said, what are the qualifying conditions for somebody to become born again? What what conditions will somebody meet before they can do water baptism? So number one, they must hear the gospel. And yesterday we said, Proverbs chapter 20, verse 12, says the hearing ears and the seeing eyes, the Lord will be able to them. So there's the hearing ears, we must hear the gospel in our, with our spiritual ears. We must see Jesus with our spiritual eyes. Spiritual eyes doesn't mean they have to be trans or efficient. We must try and picture spiritually what Jesus did on the cross. Because if we see what Jesus did on the cross, it will be easier for us to appreciate what he really did. But if we understand it from our physical head, then every now and then we don't know it. We must be born again. We must be born again. Jesus said to Nicodemus in John chapter 3, that unless a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That is why we're doing this, so that people can have the opportunity to be born again in spirit and be baptized in the water. Some of us have been baptized before. We just like to renew that covenant with the Lord, and it's a fantastic thing. There's nothing wrong with it. It's better to do it several, several times than not getting it right at all. Because the Bible says in uh, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, it is appointed unto man who wants to die, and after that judgment, there is no repentance in the grave. Ephesians chapter 5, redeeming the time for the days are evil. So anything we have to do, let us do it now. Jesus said he must walk the walk of his father while it is still there. He said the night time comment when no man can walk. The night time meaning when somebody has passed on from this dead. When we pass on, there is no other remedy, nothing else. No, no purgatory or anything like that. When we go, we go. Then the next thing becomes judgment. Hallelujah. So this is the time that people need to rethink their position with God while there is still time. Okay. So case studies. Um, yesterday we read Matthew chapter 3 where Jesus was baptized. The Bible said when he came and heaven spoke to him and he heard the voice. The Holy Ghost came mighty upon him and he heard the voice. This is my beloved son, the woman who well, please. Acts of Apostle chapter 2, on the day of Pentecost, people were, uh, there was an outpouring of the Spirit, people became born again, and they were baptized. Acts of Apostle chapter 8, verses 26, we did all this, so we're not going to go through those scriptures again, because it's just a recap. Acts of Apostle chapter 8, verse 26 to 40, Philip joined himself to the Ethiopian Union, you know, when the Ethiopian Union you know, had the Gospel. Actually, that, that is where you know is like Tabitha, because after Philip finished preaching the gospel to him, and they were in the shadows going, it was the Ethiopian you know, that said, Peter, Philip, oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Now that I've heard the gospel, why don't you baptize me? 
this man, young Tata, about us to say, Pastor, when are we going to do water baptism? So, Tabitha, the way she's been on my case for this water baptism to happen, that was what Philip, uh, you know, did to Philip. Philip was the one that preached the gospel. Philip was not the one that asked him if he wanted to be baptized. He saw the need. Once he got convicted, he got born again. He said, oh, I want to be baptized. Look at the water. Why don't we do it now? Praise God. Acts of the Apostles chapter 10, we read just now, Peter went to Cornelius. The house of Cornelius was the house of the Gentiles. And that is the beginning of the engrafting of the Gentiles into the concept of Christianity. So before then, if Peter didn't make this trip, and if Jesus didn't initiate it in any way, by this time you and I would probably have no right to call ourselves Christian because the understanding as at the time of Peter was that it is only the Jews, the Israelis, that Jesus came for. Until God visited Peter and changed that. And then uh, the Bible says we are now grafted in, grafted in, meaning pulled us in so we can become part of that family. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16, verses 1 to 40, Paul and Silas, uh, remember Paul and Silas, they prayed and sang and the Holy Ghost came down. The interesting thing is that the people who jailed Paul and Silas, when God opened the prison yard door, they gave, gave their life to Christ and they were baptized. That is the account in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16, verses 1 to 40. So, quite a few examples there, but there is a consistent theme throughout all those uh, case studies that were referred to Jesus, obviously uh, John the Baptist was preaching because in the, in the wilderness people had the gospel, he was preaching the gospel of repentance, people had the gospel, responded to the gospel and then they were baptized the door of Pentecost, Peter preached after the apostles of the tree, people had the gospel, responded to the gospel and they were baptized, the Ethiopia you know, had the gospel, understand the gospel, responded and were baptized then, as the apostles of the term, Peter preached in the house of Cornelius. Yeah. So, everything there's a consistent team. People hear the gospel, respond to the gospel, and they become baptized. Hallelujah. So, we took some questions yesterday as well, and some of them questions that people could ask. So, baptism means being buried with Christ and coming alive as a new creation. Buried, submerged with Christ, come alive a new person, a new person, Christ. Yes. It's just within it, okay? Okay. Is that what we do? Yeah. Okay. Something from this here. Okay. So that's what it is. So we have a new life, you know, a new life in Christ. What about this resource in us having a new life in Christ? Spiritual growth. When we become born, uh, baptized, there must be God will release some type of uh, very uh, uncommon appetite to grow and to become more connected with God and with His Holy Spirit. Uh, then we have to leave our childishness behind. Hallelujah. I pray that God will put something in us today that um, when we become baptized today, somehow God will move us to another level and give us some understanding. Help us move away from uh, spiritual childishness. And then we took some questions yesterday as well. Uh, people asked their questions. I will uh, took their questions and answer the questions. And then we did some uh, new stuff which uh, we encouraged people to bring their changing clothes, bring the towel. Um, and then we went through some of the things we're going to be doing today. So and they will ask some important questions about people. You can ask that question about should people cover their hair when they're going on water and things like that. So which also led us to having a very important discussion about uh, women covering their hair in church and men not covering their hair in church. And uh, that you can find in First Corinthians chapter 11. We dealt with that extensively. So as I mentioned also, so after this message now, I'm going to go through the next couple of slides. Um, I'll give people opportunity to uh, get themselves ready for the baptism, getting themselves ready, meaning if you don't, if you don't already have the clothes that you will be baptized in, just go to the end of the uh, restrooms and change uh, and get ready, because once I finish myself, I'm going to get in my uh, full clothes and then we'll come back and we'll do the baptism. So we'll baptize as many people that are here um, and then people can hang around as much as they would like 
I'll be staying here till 5 o'clock. In case people come, anybody come in, I'll still be here to do the baptism. <coughs> so, today's session is just another recap. These are all the things we've done. Next steps. If we are not yet born again, before we take this gracious step of water baptism, I'd like us to bow down our head. If you are not yet born again, then ask Jesus to come into your life. If you are already born again, <coughs> Or you're already in the church, but you think, hmm, no, there are some areas and things that needs to be, you know, that needs to line up that are not quite that are not quite lined up. Then just talk to Jesus about those things now. Talk to Jesus about those things now. Because we need to make sure that we are in a state where scripturally speaking, we are ready for the water baptism. And everything we can see from scripture is the message of repentance being preached. And when people embrace the message of repentance, they say, oh, I'm really sorry. I want to be born again. They become born again. And then they explain to them the concept of water baptism, buried our old life, resurrected, resurrected in power with Christ, being buried and joined up with Christ as we resurrect. That's the whole concept of it. Once they accept that, then they're ready for water baptism. You're here, you're not born again, or you think you need to reconnect your life to Christ just in your own very simple way where you are. Ask the Lord to come into your life. Ask Him to have mercy. Let nothing stand on the way as we all get ready to be baptized today. Talk to the Lord about that. 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 You're previously Christian or you're in the church. You're not quite sure where you are with things, etc. Just talk to Jesus, talk to Jesus, talk to Jesus. Tell Jesus about it. Lord, make me ready, purify me, remove every impurity, everything that does not promote you, everything that does not make me worthy and ready for this. Lord, take it away, take it away, take it away, take it away. Lord, take it away, take it away, take it away, take it away. Let me be in a state where I will be willing and ready. Let your grace and mercy make me worthwhile for this exercise. Talk to the Lord, talk to the Lord, talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord, talk to the Lord, talk to the Lord. As I am immersed in this water, it no longer becomes water. I rise with Christ in power. If you have finished that salvation prayer, then you can now start talking to the Lord about what you want to see happen to you as you are baptized. Begin to pray now also, those of us who want to be baptized, tell God exactly what you are expecting from this baptism. Remember, the Bible says the expectations of the righteous will not be cut short. But first, there has to be expectation for us to know whether the expectation has been met or not. Hallelujah. Sorry, that's what I said. There has to be expectation first. Thank you, sir. For us to know whether the expectation has been met or not. So lift up your voice and talk to the Lord. Lift up your voice and talk to the Lord. What do you want to happen to you when you get baptized? A couple of things happened to Jesus when he was baptized. And if I were you, I would want those kind of things that happened to Jesus, my master, to happen to me. I say I'm baptized. The Bible says as Jesus was baptized, the heavens opened up. What about you? Would you like heaven to open up to you in a different dimension as you are baptized today? The second thing is that the Bible says the dove appeared in the cloud. Mm -hmm. Another dimension of endowment of the power of the Holy Spirit. And the power of God said Jesus was empowered. 
In addition to all that, some of us are probably not feeling well and we say as we get into this school, that sickness is very never to rise again. So water baptism can, you can do all kinds of things. It's like it's very powerful. It's not just water as in water. It is water from heaven. It is powerful spiritual exercise. Some of us are struggling with all kinds of dreams. And you want to say, Lord, as I enter into this pool, it's not just going to be water. What about us as is holding me down and is attacking my dreams? As I enter into this pool and come up, no more will I face those challenges in my dreams. Some of us are going through all kinds of things. Much more challenges, challenges in our career, challenges in our finance, challenges in our health, challenges in the life of family members, whatever it is. As you are coming, it's about faith. As much as your faith can take is what you get. Because what we are doing here today, water baptism is clearly the will of God. Clearly the will of God. They not lost Kappa.
lost and great is put unto you. The water in this pool, everything connected with this pool, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, as we consecrate this pool, <laughs> as we dedicate this pool to you, Holy Spirit, take over. Lord Jesus, take over. Ancient of days, take over. Glorious one in battle, take over. I am that I am, take over. On change of change, take over. Invisible authority, take over. Nico Boko to Sansaya. Whatever is committed into your hands, it is safe, it is secured. So I commit and dedicate this food into your hands. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. By strength shall not man prevail. It's not of me who run it, neither is of you who will it. But of you, my Father, who show have mercy. Show us your mercy, show us your mercy. Eloquence is not enough. Our ability is not enough. Our wisdom is not enough. Send us help. Send us help. Send us help. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray.